Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Or if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Dana. I upload a new video every single Sunday and I like to throw in an extra or two during the week whenever I can. So if you haven't yet, now is a great time to subscribe to my channel and stay on top of all of my new videos. If you're new to the tea journey, you have come to the right place. I recently wrote an ebook called The Basics of Tea and it's just kind of meant to be an awesome beginner's guide to start your tea journey with so that you're able to go into tea stores with confidence. And I've put together this little series of videos to kind of supplement the book. So if you're interested in having all of this in print as well, I have that linked below. This one is especially exciting because this is my first foray into tea that's not really tea in this series. So all real tea comes from the Camellia sinensis plant, which is the tea plant. So black tea, green tea, oolong, white tea, all of those come from Camellia sinensis. But there are a lot of other things that we steep and consume as tea that technically aren't tea. Today we're going to talk about rooibos. Rooibos comes from the South African red bush plant, so it's completely different than the Camellia sinensis. Rooibos is completely caffeine free, which makes it an awesome alternative to the other tea types if you are caffeine sensitive. Rooibos can either be red or green in color due to the way it's processed. So if you take a look here, you can sort of see at the bottom, these really fine little pieces are the rooibos, and this actually looks like there is a mix of red and green rooibos in there. So that's kind of how it looks. I don't have any straight rooibos tea on hand, so I am gonna have to get a little creative in showing you guys what it looks like. So most of the teas that I own that are rooibos have red rooibos in them. We're gonna kind of have to look around the chunks because all of the ones I have are blends that contain other ingredients as well. These little tiny fine reddish pieces, those are the little rooibos leaves. So they're just these really fine little guys. They're almost like these little sticks. They're just really, got some on my finger there. They're just like really small and tiny pieces. So that's why when you're choosing an infuser or a way to make your tea, you want to make sure that it has really fine holes so that the rooibos can't get through the holes because that's the smallest little pieces of tea that you'll probably ever steep. So you have to be a little extra careful. With. Rooibos has a sweet honey-like taste. The green rooibos does have a little bit of like a green vegetal sort of thing going on, but red rooibos has a really nice honey note and a super high electrolyte content. So it's awesome for when you're feeling dehydrated and you need like a nice hydration boost, whether you drink it iced or hot, it's super awesome for that. It's hydrating, refreshing, and super versatile. It can be combined with a lot of different types of ingredients to get different tastes. So I'm excited to go through some of the rooibos I have in my collection so you guys can sort of see some examples. But let's get a cup steeping. I got this at a restaurant. I ordered hot tea from the menu for dessert and they brought out like a box of tea bags by this brand, The Mighty Leaf and a server said to pick one to take home and drink after dinner. And I picked this one. Oh, it's in, oh wow, their tea bags look a lot like David's Teas ones. So we can see right through it. Oh, this is actually a way better example of what rooibos looks like. But um, the server told me to bring one home as well because maybe they don't sell a lot of tea, I don't know. But this has been sitting on my shelf for quite a while. And it's, African rooibos leaves with notes of vanilla, mango, and hibiscus blossoms. So it's definitely a blend, but you can get a really nice look at these rooibos leaves in there. Check it out. So that's how red rooibos looks. It's that beautiful, like, like reddish brown color and those little fine pieces. So let's go ahead and get this steeping. It says steep for five minutes. With rooibos, you can actually steep it as long as you like. Since it doesn't contain actual tea leaves, it won't oversteep or get bitter. It'll only get stronger in flavor. 
It smells really good. I love that like honey undertone that it has. It's full of nutrients as well. It's also loaded with antioxidants. So if you are caffeine sensitive and you're kind of um, trying to avoid the caffeine of an actual like tea, rooibos is a great bet for that because it has still a really nice high level of antioxidants but without the caffeine and all while being nice and hydrating. So while we wait for our tea to steep, I figured we could go through my collection and I can show you guys some of the rooibos teas that I own. Starting with this one, this is Nutty Granola Crunch and I have it in this really cute bear tin. This was a tea that a lot of people didn't like and this came out when I first started working at David's Tea and I bought a lot of it and I even ended up restocking because I loved it so much but I know a lot of people really didn't like this one. It has apple, rooibos, almonds, coconut, brittle pieces, natural and artificial flavoring, contains almonds, coconut, and hazelnut. It honestly like it tastes like a peanut like not even like peanut butter like it tastes like drinking peanuts and that sounds so weird but it's really good to me for some reason but it has like a lot of nice chunks in there and rooibos is the perfect base because it really like sweetens it up and just adds to that like nutty smooth kind of flavor so this was probably one of the first teas i actually bought from david's tea and i just i'm in love with this tin look at that cute little guy and then this one is not an actual rooibos tea. This one's a black tea from Plum Deluxe, but they really seem to like to mix rooibos in with their other kinds of tea. So a lot of their black teas and um, I think even some of their green teas have rooibos in there as well. I don't know if it's like to cut the caffeine content or for flavor, but this one's really awesome. It's Fireside Chat Black Tea. And rooibos is the second ingredient, but it has a lot of nice spices and a really nice kick of like smoky flavor. That's another cool thing that they do with rooibos sometimes is you can find like naturally caffeine free Earl Grey's where instead of using like a black tea for an Earl Grey, they'll use rooibos instead. So instead of being decaffeinated and having to go through like a chemical process to remove the caffeine, it's just totally naturally caffeine free, which I think is really cool. Plus you're still getting antioxidants and you're getting the hydrating benefits. So sometimes you will find blends that are kind of traditional, but like swapped out like the actual tea leaves for the rooibos. This was one I tried around Halloween and it's called Forbidden Root. It has almonds as the first ingredient. So it does have that nice like creamy, like kind of marzipan sort of thing going on. And rooibos is the second ingredient. And then roasted chicory root, burdock root, dandelion root, licorice root, monk fruit, safflower, and artificial toasted almond flavoring. This one tasted kind of like, I guess like dark in flavor. Like, I don't know what it was about this one. It has almost like a coffee note to it. But this wasn't my favorite, but it is a rooibos I have in my collection. And then the rest of the ones I have all are some of my favorites actually. This tea I talk about probably way too much. Mmm. This is Buku Superfruit. And it has Buku leaves in it, so it's like super fluffy, like those big green leaves. But it is a rooibos base. So this has uh, acai and it has, I think, goji berries in there as well. But if you look nice and closely in the spoon here, you'll see those rooibos guys peeking out. I love this one. Rooibos is a nice bet for if you have sort of eaten something that makes you like not feel so good because it helps to like rehydrate you. So the combination of the rooibos with like the buku leaves, which are a detoxifying leaf in this tea just make me feel so good. So whenever I used to like eat fast food or eat something that just like made me feel kind of gross, I would drink this after and it would like bring me back to life. I love this tea. I'm not sure if it's still up on David's Tea's website, but I feel like it comes back 
periodically. So if you ever do have the chance to buy this one, trust me, try it after you've eaten something weird and let me know how you felt after because I really feel like it makes such a quick difference when you're feeling kind of gross. And it tastes really good too. It tastes like acai, but also like the like herbiness of the leaves. It's really, really great. This one is called Alpine Punch. And I put it in this little tin with mountains and like a little ski lift because it's like alpine, like the uh, mountains. But this one reminds me of Princess Belle. I don't know why it has such a like Beauty and the Beast vibe for me. It's like kind of spiced, kind of almondy, kind of floral. Like there's black pepper, coconut, rose petals, cardamom. It's just a really, really beautiful blend of things. It's like so good around the holidays and it's nice like on a cozy like winter night. Of course you could enjoy it all year round, but I feel like it's just such a sweet like cozy tea. I don't have the ingredients on hand, but it's a really nice rooibos blend that I love. And it's unique too. I feel like I've never had a tea similar to this one. And then last but not least, another one that came out around the same time as that Nutty Granola Crunch. This is Carrot Cupcake. And this one makes one of my favorite lattes of all time. And it does have a lot of chunks of stuff. It's a good mix. It has carrot pieces, licorice root, all kinds of good stuff, ginger, it has like a natural like whipped cream flavoring in it, which makes it really sweet and decadent, but also that licorice root. I know a lot of people get scared away when they hear the word licorice, but licorice root adds such an amazing sweetness to a tea. And this one is just beautiful. It's so, so good. All right, so I think we've had this guy steeping for at least five minutes, so we should be good to remove that tea bag. So I don't really know much about this brand, Mighty Leaf. It says Whole Leaf Tea. I don't know much about them, so I don't know if they're like a retail tea brand or if they're like exclusive to restaurants and things. So I figure I can go ahead and look them up real quick just to see if I can get a little more information. Oh, it looks like they have them at Pete's Coffee. It looks like they're based in Emeryville, California by a husband and wife team. Oh my gosh, I feel like there are so many husband and wife teams that are just like, or I mean, there's like one other one, <laughs> Tea by Daniel. But it's so inspiring to see like husband and wife teams like killing it and like in business. Yeah, and it says the company distributes tea through wholesale, retail, and online sales channels. It looks like you can buy it even at like Walmart and Target. That's kind of interesting. So they have it like Walmart and Target, but it's like the official tea that Pete's Coffee serves as well. So let's go ahead and give this one a try. Ooh, it definitely has that like honey note. But you gotta love like the beautiful color of a rooibos. So pretty. This one is pretty minimally flavored. Not sure what is even actually in this blend. All right, so the first ingredient is organic rooibos and then natural flavors organic hibiscus flowers, and organic marigold blossoms. So I guess the only thing that would really add much other flavor would be um, the hibiscus. But honestly, I don't get that sort of like tartness from it. I mostly do taste the rooibos, so I think this is a really cool blend. It really does allow the rooibos to shine, but I also recommend trying a straight rooibos tea if you have the chance because it really is nice and sweet on its own especially if you are looking to try more caffeine free options because it's just a great alternative for a regular tea it has a lot of good benefits that, that like traditional tea from the camellia sinensis also has plus i love those like hydrating effects and the electrolytes i think that's really fantastic And honestly, you could do anything with a rooibos tea and it will taste awesome. Like you can do it hot, you can have it iced, 
You can do it as a latte. You can add sweetener if you'd like. You can have it without. A lot of awesome ways to enjoy it and literally like a million different blends you could find with it. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning all about rooibos tea. This was my first of the infusions section of the basics of tea series. So if you guys made it all the way through the video, let me know if you have tried a rooibos tea before and what kind of blends are your favorites. Rooibos tea also had like, um, like a lot of their really fun blends of rooibos teas, like their birthday cake and their cotton candy. So a lot of really cool ones pair nicely with the rooibos leaves. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.